Hello, I'm Edward Court. Welcome to the fourth tutorial on Woodwind Instrument Designer, software for designing woodwind musical instruments. Today we're going to talk about the instrument representation used by the program. We'll talk about length type and decimal precision. What do all the numbers mean? Uh, why did we decide to measure from the top of the, the flute rather than from the bottom? and exactly where you should measure from, and a couple of scenarios changing the, the bore profile, changing the number of holes. So, let's get started. Let's bring up the program, and let's open an instrument file. Uh, since I've opened this file before, it's, it's sitting in the most recent um, list in file menu and this is an instrument. It has a name and a name is required. A description and descriptions are useful. Uh, they show up in the open dialog box so you can know uh, what this instrument is about. And then a bunch of numbers. So uh, there's a mouthpiece representation which has a number of parameters we'll go through. Um, there's a bore representation that I identifies places, inflection points, uh, where the bore diameter changes, and then the listing of all the holes um, with a name that you can change, position, spacing between holes, the diameter of the hole, and the hole height, the, the wall thickness at the hole. First, dimension type. As I explained in a previous video, uh, this program supports the common dimension length types that you might use, and they're changed in the options pane. So currently we're inches if you happen to like working in millimeters. Change that, and again, as I explained in the, in the UI, uh, introduction. Uh, won't change this file until you refresh it. And the easiest way to refresh it is to change its view, toggle its view back and forth. So we go to the XML representation and just toggle it back and it'll get reloaded. Now all the numbers are in millimeters, those that have a length type. Um, you'll also notice that the decimal preci precision changed. Um, it's unlikely you can measure more than a hundredth of a millimeter, so the decimal precision is two decimal places for the case where you choose millimeters. Uh, if you happen to, to want to do it in meters, uh, which is what the program does internally, um, you'll find that the decimal precision there um, changes to five decimal places. I personally use uh, inches. Uh, I have rulers that are uh, marked in hundredths of an inch and I find that very convenient. So let's put it back to inches. And now we're accurate. We, we display to, to a thousandth of an inch, uh, which is Yes, I'm anal. That's, that's what I measure to when I make a Native American flute. So let's go through some of these numbers and, and tell you what they mean. Um, as I said, we measure everything from the top of, of the flute. So let's see what this flute looks like. It's a flute that... has its, um, its TSH, its true sound hole, right at the top of the bore with a flat bore on the end. Um, and so the splitting edge position is, and we're measuring, so the top of the bore has a position of zero. So the splitting edge is 0.18 inches from the top of the bore, and it's also 
eight inches in length. Um, its width is a half an inch, 0.5 inches, and the flue depth is 32 hundredths of an inch, which is 32 thousandths of an inch, which is pretty standard. Uh, many people make a naff with a, a, a deeper, deeper flue. And the fipple factor. So if you were a user of NA Flutamat, um, a program that I wrote many years ago, uh, you, you were used to a bird factor and a, um, a splitting edge factor. And it's combined in this program into one thing called the fipple factor. Uh, which takes into account the geometry at the head of the flute. I'll give a, a whole, hopefully short, tutorial that explains the fipple factor and how to use it um, in the future. Termination flange diameter, so this takes into account what's happening right at the foot of the flute. Um, how thick is the wall at the foot of the flute? Um, so it's essentially the outside dimension at the foot. So let's now talk about bore points. As I said, every place that the, the bore changes diameter as an inflection point, you put a bore point. So this is a straight bore flute. I'll expand it out. You can see that the bore doesn't change in diameter for the whole length of the flute. So it only needs a definition of two bore points, the head of the flute here uh, with a position of zero and a diameter of one, and the foot of the flute, 17.96 um, inches, again with a diameter of one inch. Now suppose this were like a recorder, and you can make a, a Native American flute with, with tapered bores. I do it quite often. So suppose the top diameter were 0.8 inches. Now the flute is smaller at the top than at the bottom. And you can see if I blow it up, um, this effect. Suppose the fl we wanted to model a flute that had, instead of a square top, many of us use, use routers and split, split half flutes, um, and it's round at the top. Let me open, and that's the way I make them, what that one looks like. So now, and I got a little carried away here, there's a number of bore points and I've done two things here. One, and let's first take a look at what I've done and let's blow that up so you can see I have a circular end or a hemispherical end um, and my TSH butts up against not the end of the bore here, but a place where I don't have to cut out any wood in, in the bore as I'm cutting the TSH. So let's see the representation of that in the instrument file. I've done a number of things. One now, um, my origin, my, my zero point is not the end of the bore as it was in this previous example where zero was the top bore point. In fact, the top bore point here is a negative number, perfectly allowed. The end of my origin, my zero point in positions, and it applies to all of these numbers for splitting edge position and for bore points and for holes, I measure from the top of the TSH. Uh, it's exposed um, at the top of the flute. It's a nice, nice flat surface and it's easy to measure from. Um, I'm willing to bet that many of you measure from that same point. 
So as such, the splitting edge is that same distance as the TSH length um, from the origin, 0.18 inches. And I have bore points that start at an eighth of an inch above um, north of the back of the TSH. So it's a, a minus um, 0.125. And then they change position and diameter um, to represent that curve. And finally, at a three-eighths of an inch from the back of the TSH, um, were to a circular bore or um, from the, the top of the, the bore were a half inch, which is what you expect for the uh, hemisphere with a, a bore diameter of one inch. So anything you would like to do um, in bore points, um, the program can calculate that just fine. I tend to make, for my larger flutes, um, I put a taper, taper at some point in the flute. I know that other people do that as well. Pat Heron comes to mind. He makes a, a tapered bore. Uh, I don't make mine typically full length, but I'll put a section of the bore in there that uh, has a taper. So to, to add a bore point, you can see add a row above or below the selection, let's add it above. Yeah, in fact, let's add two of them. And let's put a taper in the middle of the flute and let's say start it at five inches. So we're going to be flat to five inches and then at 12 inches we'll reach the other bore diameter, one inch. And let's see what this kind of arrangement looks like. And let's expand it out so you can see the difference. Oops, now I've fallen into my trap. The, the display is what you select in the study. And we're playing with this one, with the one inch bore, and so we've created a flute that's smaller at the top, tapers at five inches to 12 inches. So the program will give you a linear interpolation of diameter between two bore points that have different diameters and gets larger at the end. Well, I typically make mine um, with the taper just the opposite. So I would make this say 1.2 and 1.2 bigger at the top than the bottom to control tuning it doesn't do a lot for the voicing and many of my flutes might have an internal um, profile as such but the bottom line is that whether you are designing a flute with a non-straight bore profile or you're making branch flutes or bamboo flutes and you can estimate the change in in bore profile bamboo doesn't doesn't grow with a linear a straight bore it gets bigger on one end than the other if you can estimate those, you can put them in the program and get more accurate um, whole layout designs. The final thing is, is whole layout. So you can change the holes at will. Um, typically in using the program, you will let the program optimize hole positions, but the sample sample flutes that are delivered with the program are all six hole flutes. What if you want to make a, a five hole flute? Well, let's take a hole out and delete selected rows. And now we have a five hole flute. Again, like the inches, um, you, you need to refresh if you want to see the spacing. 
and so this is the refresh button and now we, we have this spacing so now you have a fi five hole flute and if you wanted a four hole flute the same same thing and if you wanted your your 11 hole flute um, then you could enter enter your whole names I won't make it 11 holes and these are just names um, there's no requirement that they're um, they're unique from each other, but it's nice if they are. And name them anything you like. And then put a starting position in. Again, the program is very robust when it does its optimizations in figuring out what those positions are. And if you happen to put a hole in, um, if, there is no sort order based upon name, so and there's no requirement that you put them in order. Um, the program will figure that all out, but then the names will be squirrely for you. So it's nice to put the uh, make your names uh, correspond to, to where they are on the flute, and put in diameters. Um, the, the program will yell at you if you don't have at least some idea of the diameter of them. and so forth. And these you, you'll, you'll need to, to make accurate. The, the program has no optimizer that estimates or, or gives you a design where it varies the, the wall thickness. And now you have a nine-hole flute that you can use in subsequent processing. Um, you change the name so it's meaningful in the description so you know what you're doing. So now the burning questions, why did we measure from the top? Um, in, in a flutomat, if you, and, and I tell users, uh, you don't have to go through the hassle of measuring all the mouthpiece um, parameters and determine what the bird factor is and the splitting edge factor. All that will happen is that uh, the bore may not be quite the length that the program estimates, but since the, the measurements and the calculations are from the bottom of the flute, don't worry about it. Well, the calculation engine in um, Woodwind Instrument Designer is much more sophisticated. The tuning in this program does is affected um, by these parameters. We urge you, if you want answers uh, that are, are correct, uh, to measure these factors. And as I said, I'll give you a tutorial on how to measure the FIPPLE factor for your flutes. Um, so that's the first reason. You, you need to measure these. Um, it matters. Um, second reason is somewhat arbitrary. You have to measure from somewhere. Um, and it's really very standard to, to measure from the top, and so we do it here. We do give you support for, for making your zero point anything you want. Um, it could be the whole end of the mouthpiece if you want, but typically it's going to be the bore end, the splitting edge position, or the top of the TSH. Um, use, use any of those that you like and realize that there is no constraint about making um, positions negative, um, which will happen, which happens for me all the time because I use the top of the 
the TSH and the bore extends up um, the flute. I think I've worried this um, enough. I've answered all the questions um, that I intended. So again, here are the URLs for Java, for downloading the program, for reporting issues, if you find any, um, for the rest of the video tutorials and check frequently, and um, the wiki page for using WI Designer. Thank you and have a good day.